Welcome to the Bolsa Chica Barbershop haircut tutorial. Today we're going to do a nice slick back, nice high and tight one. Right now what I'm doing is fully saturating the hair with water, letting the hair soak in, get the hair nice and flexible and pliable, lots of combing. Once you get the water nice and saturated, lots of combing, nice thorough drying. What this does, it resets the hair, wakes the hair up, and gets it ready for proper clipper over comb. So now, lots of combing, lots of blow dry, looking real good. I'm gonna go ahead and get my chair positioned, preset number one on my Takara Belmont Legend. Here we go, the Diane Flat Topper Comb, with the Andis Super ZR with an OA attachment. I always start my clipper over comb right there at the temple, nice and easy. What I'm doing is, is usually I like to use a adjustable clipper, but in this case I have the detachable because of the first pass is removing all the bulk. So nice dexterity, good angle. Nice and light, lots of combing, create that angle, strike with the comb, and swipe, and comb again. I'm dusting off the cut hair and the debris from his face. When you're swiping, a lot of the tendencies, the hair falls right into the face, so paying close attention to customer care, client care, patron care. So as you can see, I'm still taking my time really, really slowly, developing that higher edge of that angle, nice and tight along the parietal ridge, and nice and floating up there on that length on top. This middle section, I always clipper over comb the middle section, shear work on the top section. We didn't take anything, any length off of him today. So nice, picking up some speed with the clipper over comb. Starting to see that angle starting to develop, working low, middle, and then high. You notice I keep the fringe around the ears as a reverse guide. All we're worried about with the clipper over comb is that middle section. Marrying the middle section with the top section, leaving the bottom alone. Still developing that angle and removing that bulk and refining and tuning the taper as we go. With the thickness of the comb, and the OA blade, it'll easily give me a one and a half or a two or so after each swipe. So now I'm working around the backside, lifting, coming off of the head, lifting, coming off of the head. It's a very sculpting, very rewarding, creative style to cutting hair. Clipper over comb is effective in shaping, creating your desired angle. Moments are constantly fleeting because of hearts are beating. Where we are going 
Quantum physics gets close The right ones to ask Subatomic heroes Are dedicated to the task You gotta give and go, go, go Or your ass gets fast It's out of your control Go ahead and laugh There's no way of knowing Where we are going Okay, so the first removal of the bulk with the clipper over comb is done. So now I'm taking off my OA blade and snapping on my one and a half oiled up, remove the residual. I'm just grabbing my styling comb and I start right there at the parietal ridge and I scoot and I float, really using the heel of the detachable blade to rub against the head and allowing the teeth of the detachable blade to float on the higher side of the parietal ridge. I use my left hand always to help reinforce and stabilize my cutting. It gives me a nice reference point. Once again, the one and a half detachable blade really scooting that parietal ridge to remove and equalize all of the previous clipper over comb work. The clipper over comb work, you can get it down really close, but the 1A blade allows you to really get a good soft machined edge so you continue tapering down to the 1. Really digging those teeth into that parata ridge and then floating using the butt of the detachable blade along the parietal ridge as the teeth float. Watching the taper develop, remember we're trying to go to a nice high one, so we still have some decent work to do. Okay, still cleaning and got my air, my foot controlled air hose. So I'm snapping off the one and a half, taking it to the one and a quarter, and continue working just below the overlapping midsection. I like to divide the midsection into three sections the upper middle, the middle middle, and the lower middle. So right now I'm working that middle middle section with a one and a quarter and just floating, continuing to scoop out and get that transition nice and clean. Really the goal here is to achieve that one. Still clearing that side reverse guide taking my time, letting the clipper do all the work. As you can see, we keep that lower fringe, that edge work. It's a reverse guide. You can use it to take visual measurements from side to side to make sure that you are working symmetrically around the head very hand-eye coordinated style of cutting, freestyling it, if you will. Combing out the debris using my foot-controlled air hose. Okay, we're still with our Andis ZR. And we're snapping on the one, oiling him up, wipe the residual, grab your styling comb. Okay, now we are at a one, 
So we're going to go ahead and clear the debris off of his face, client comfort, and real easy, just take off that fringe and scoop up into that one and a quarter. You don't have to be too concerned about exactly where those overlapping sections are. You just got to kind of feel it and let it develop. So lots of combing, giving away the debris, looking at that final look, taking off the neck warmer, and just continuing to scoop and get that true one. So you can see the one is about halfway up, one and a quarter, one and a half into your clip rover comb and that upper middle section. Now we're definitely at the lower middle section or what I like to call the fringe. We will still do some trimmer work to dial in that nice tight edge. I like to take my time at this point buffing and cleaning, pushing that one up as high as you can. That is a hair block by Ivan Zoot. It's a really cool for pulling out debris and really cool for getting that uniform look and that final look on that taper. Nice high one, slick back. Remember, that's what we're going for here today. So just continue buffing and working around, making sure everything looks great. As you see there, I reached over and touched my Chromebook, my laptop. That Chromebook is what controls all of my music videos you see on the screen up there. I have an HDMI cable that runs the length of the room and plugs right into my TV. So I control all of my music videos right there from my Chromebook. I've got lots of playlists. The clients usually really enjoy the visual aspect of the music. No TV, no news, music videos all day long. So there you can see a good shot of removing that fringe, taking off that one. As you can tell, this is called soft line tapering. I work from the top down. So you just kind of watch it develop as you go in those three easy steps. Clipper over comb the upper middle section. Use your detachables for the middle middle and the lower middle and we'll go into some trimmer work here in just a second. Okay, so the taper is coming along nicely. A lot of cleaning, buffing, trying to get those shaded areas to transition nice and smooth. The air hose there, blowing all the debris off before I put it on top of the counter. Clean as you go. So this I like to reset my palette, I like to call this. Clear all the debris out of the area. Uh, all the bulk is gone. Now we can really get a good look at how everything's going to come together. Get a look at that profile just to make sure that the angle's symmetrical on both sides. I try not to complicate this stuff too much. Obviously, as barbers and stylists, we do 
a lot of this stuff very repetitiously day in and day out. So over the course of a few weeks into a couple of months, you start to get really, really good at developing your own routine, developing your own bag of tricks, developing your eye and hand coordination, and making your patrons happy and making your bank account happy as well. So lots of blow drying here. We're getting a good eye set on what that final is going to look like. My patron here, he, he's got a wild head of hair up there, the calyx and, and that um, really coarse hair uh, kind of wants to do its own thing. So what we're going to try to do is blend it out a little tiny bit and uh, try to work with it as best we can. So at the moment here, I've got my Diane flat topper comb. I see a little bit of overhang. We're just going to kind of address that upper middle section. Remember we talked about there's three sections, the top section, the side section, and the edge. And the side section has three sections as well. The upper middle, the middle middle, and the lower middle. The art and the skill comes in marrying all those sections together. So that upper middle section, just a little bulky. Uh, but now that the main part of the bulk is removed, we can really refine that to get it to look nice and copacetic. Good profile there. There we go. Really come off the head and hold that comb nice and sturdy. Like I said before, repetition, you'll really get that clipper comb action working for you. Uh, it's a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit amount of work at the beginning, but this is a tried and true way of cutting hair. Clipper over comb is very valuable to have polished in your skill set. So here you go, I got the little tiny barber taper comb, my Andes cordless trimmer. Always clean the debris, always oil the machine, always wipe the residual. You know, I uh, switched it up there. Actually, um, the uh, Andes trimmer um, wasn't seated last night, and so the battery had discharged. So that's fine. We make adjustments. That's what we do as barbers. We are presented with the situation and we make adjustments and keep moving. So I've grabbed my brother, fantastic trimmer. Although it's very, very different, all the tools are subtly different. Um, so you'll just kind of have to um, decide for your liking what you choose. I like to try a little bit of everything. <clears throat> so here just working around that nice defined line that arc around the top of the ear I always like to take off minimal amounts just take off the sandiness get a nice crisp line don't go too high so when it grows out it grows out nice and subtly. So I focus on the line, then I focus on the field, the area opposite the line. And I don't move on until my eye and my gut tell me that everything looks great. A few little last touches and then we move on. There you go, starting right there at that temple point, just get a good arc, nice and easy. Right around the top of the ear, the nape, up into the back of the ear, the field area, and then fold the ear back and connect the two dots. A little bit more cleaning. Taking your time during this part, your patrons will tune in to if you're rushing or hurrying. I really like to take my time. My haircuts in my shop are 
40 bucks. The haircuts take about 30 minutes. So it really allows you a lot of time to address the top, address the sides, and then the trimmer work with lots of detail. There you go, stepping back, get a good eye, and just finish off that nice crisp line. I think detailing at this point, the patrons really appreciate that good, soft, clean look. Okay, shifting gears here real quick. I'm going to grab my Wall Senior 5 Star Cordless. I like this clipper because it cuts super crisp, super sharp. Cleans that edge nice. To me, detachables are generally for removing bulk. And I did use detachables all the way down on this taper. Uh, the next video will do an adjustable taper, which is a lot of fun. This one we move around quite a bit with different attachments, different clippers. I like to keep my routine nice and simple, nice and clean. I do a lot of stuff very repetitiously, very methodically as we go. Finishing off that taper all the way open, a third of the way closed, and then all the way closed just tapering down, getting it really nice and soft along that edge. Swaying back and forth, cleaning, closing down, closing down, and moving down into the nape. So just a good clean finish, nothing too fancy, nothing too special. Okay, air hose again. Changing gears again. Okay, now I've got the Diane flat topper comb and my 4420 thinning shears. It's a bit out of screen, but you can see I'm just very lightly blending out those ends. So when you get the product in the hair and you get it slicked back, it doesn't pile up on each other too much. It's real important to finish with the 4420s or your blending shear of choice and just take off those ends to get them to feather, remove that bulk so the pomade doesn't pile up too high. Okay, just a little bit of blending. I'll blow the debris out here now. You don't want to leave that blended out debris in the hair because we're getting ready to go into a neck shave and some pomade. So you want to make sure that that debris is out of the top of the hair before you put pomade in there. If you put pomade in there, you got all this cut hair coming out in your hands and in the style. So I take a lot of time to clean, a lot of time to watch those details, watch the haircut develop. You can see that profile there looks real good. Lots of length on top. It's going to slick back real nice. Good, clean, high and tight. One clipper over comb, the upper middle section. Went to my detachables, one and a half, one and a quarter, and a one. You know, the one and a half is four millimeters. The one and a quarter is 3.2 millimeters. And the one is 2.4 millimeters. The OA is 1.2 millimeters. The millimeters really get you into the nitty-gritty of exactly how much hair you're cutting. So now we're just kind of buffing. I'm healing all the way out with my adjustable. Healing all the way out, all the way open, gives you about a one and a half. So you can know you got a bit of a safety zone there. So done buffing, done cleaning, and we'll move into the shave portion, the neck shave. So I opened up the chair cloth, cleaned the debris, tucked in a fresh towel to isolate the area, prevent his clothes from getting wet from the steam towel. Once again, grab that trimmer and your neck duster. And just clean up those little hairs that you couldn't get to a few minutes ago when the chair cloth was on. And a little tiny bit of buffing and cleaning. Use your eye at this time to do last minute little tiny details. 
to the tiniest little hair. There we go, nice and clean. Just prepping for the next shave. Okay, trimmer down. And here we go, steam cabinet. Nice batch of hot steam towels. I open them up and I hit them with that Osage rub. That Osage rub is fabulous. Invigorating splash for head and face. It's menthol and eucalyptus. I buy them for $5.95 a bottle from Williamsport Barber Supply. And take your time. Let that steam towel soften the skin, soften the hairs, clear debris, bring the moisture content of the skin up, soothes your client. It's the most relaxing part of the haircut. And I like to tell people that there's nowhere else you can go to get a hot steam towel on your neck. And there's nowhere else you can go but the barbershop when you leave and you feel that cool air hit your freshly shaved neck. It really is one of the biggest selling points. And there we go. First use of the latherizer, I always stir it with my brush. I have my brush there. I like that Scout Master Latherizer because it's one hand activated. There we go. And one hand with my thumb. There you go. Pull it off with your thumb right onto the neck. There you go. Nice and easy. Rinse that hands in the sink. Play a little drum style. There you go. So I'm grabbing my Rebel Razor, the offset Rebel Razor. You can really see the exposed edge of the blade, so you can really follow exactly where your line's gonna go. I take that trash, I get a little trash opening in my cupboard there. Pop it in, hold the blade in place. This razor is called a swing lock. There's also the slide lock. I prefer the swing lock. They're a bit more solid in their shaving. Okay, with the shave, always swipe with your thumb to feel for bumps, moles, and just nice and easy. Let the blade do all the work. A little bit of shave cream there. It's nice and wet and moist. And a nice, easy nape shave. A little reverse backhand right in there in that little spot. Nice and easy. And dispose of the blade and wipe the residual shave cream. Hit him with some of that bay rum. Nice. Let that soak in. Fan him off that cool air. Okay, looking good. Finish with a little bit of talc. The talc cools, soothes, takes the shine. I pour a little bit too much and then fan it out and then apply it. Nice and easy. Okay, seals everything up, finishes everything off real nice. Discard that soiled linen. Okay, here we go. The haircut's done, and we're going to go into the styling portion. What I like to do right now is saturate him with the Layrite Grooming Spray. And what the Layrite Grooming Spray does, it introduces moisture into the hair, which gets the hair to be nice and flexible. And the added adhesives in the grooming spray really help the pomade to kick up a notch. You can use water. Water has a cutting effect to the pomade. I like to use the grooming spray because of those adhesives boost it. So the moisture helps the pomade disperse nice and evenly in the hair, but the grooming spray, the adhesives 
add to the grip and the grab. Because his hair has got a lot of flair to it on the sides there, you see, we're going to need that extra grab to get this slick back to take shape and stay in shape. So lots of combing. What I'm doing is I'm getting that grooming spray to really saturate, to really work in the entire length of the hair. There we go. And I'm also feeling if there's too much, I'll back it off like I am here. Just back it off a little bit. And let that moisture work for you. Grab that can of Layrite Super Hold. Take a big, chunky knuckles worth. There you go. Work that up in the palms of your hands and apply with your fingertips, just like a brushes. And this time I really like to take my time and apply it nice and evenly. That's what we're looking for, an even distribution of the pomade. The grooming spray helps the adhesives in there. The moisture helps the pomade disperse and the adhesives help the pomade grab. If you're at home and you don't have grooming spray, you can use water. Just use a little bit of water and maybe just a touch bit more pomade to compensate for the cutting effect of the water. There we go. So I'm really starting to remove the pomade off the palms of my hands with the hair. Really getting everything to slick back nice and tight. Rinse the residuals. It's important to have a sink at your station. I wash my hands several times during each service, not to mention before and after. Lots of hand washing. I think your patrons hear the sink, they see the sink, and they know that you take sanitation seriously. And there we go. I got that Avena 1433 pencil brush or a mini round. It really grabs and really pulls the hair back. I think it's much better than a comb. You can see the taper nice and high and tight, looking good and clean. Slick backs coming together. Just getting everything to flow. That's all you're looking for. Just nice, natural flow. Nothing too fancy. Nothing too crazy. Lots of combing. Lots of hand-eye coordination. Lots of watching the taper develop. But once again, nothing fancy, very straightforward, very repeatable, very approachable way to cutting hair. You can employ any one of these tactics in your own routine, just like I've done. I watch and I learn and I incorporate. If it's over my head, I wait until I'm ready but it's always building your bag of tricks. Finishing off with my styling comb there, just letting it be. I'm not too picky about having a perfect haircut. It's more like an attempt at a perfect service um, where the patron is happy, you're happy, and you're off and running. I wanna say thanks for taking the time to watch this slick back routine of mine. I appreciate your time. Good luck to all you hair cutters out there. This is my first video, so I'm going to do some razor fades and some other common haircuts that I find in my barbershop. Thank you once again, you guys. Take care. <laughs>